Hi, my name is Tom with FrugalPreppers.com. Uh, today I am going to be showing you uh, my little solar system. I built it, one, to learn about solar and how everything connects together, and two, uh, because I wanted a light in my shed when I went out there to look for something, and I wanted the ability to run a few power tools, but I didn't want to spend a lot of money, and I didn't want to bury a wire out. So this become a learning experience and I'll explain to you how I've scavenged a few parts here and there of what I've done to save money and where I found stuff cheaper and found different ways to do things. <laughs> One of the first things I'm going to cover with you is just some of the tools that I've used. And I found also throughout this project that, that sometimes there's a cheaper tool that you can buy that will do just as good of a job. But you're going to have to do some pretty heavy duty soldering in order to eliminate uh, the need to buy a lot of connectors which is going to run the cost of your project up significantly. Um, so one of the things I will probably say that you need most importantly is going to be a good multimeter. Um, really it doesn't even have to be a good one, any multimeter. I've had this one since I was a kid um, and, and this is what I use. It's an analog meter. But you can get a cheap digital multimeter. Um, Harbor Freight has one that's usually uh, on sale for $1.99. Just needs to be able to read voltage and maybe do 10 amps. Um, this will allow you mostly just to test your batteries and see what voltages are. And you can also uh, put this on a continuity test or at ohms resistance to make sure that all of your connections are making good connectivity. One of the other things that might be a good investment is a butane solder iron. This iron fills up with butane in the back and it makes it a torch and it also comes with a tip to use it as a soldering iron. So if you want to solder wires you can change the tip. If you want to use it as a blowtorch, you can put the blowtorch end on it. And you just light it like so. And you have a very hot pinpoint flame. Uh, one of the things I'll tell you is just the slightest amount of your breath can blow this out. So you kind of have to breathe the other direction while you're using it. But you can put a lot of heat into a heavy wire with this and get solar to melt. Um, but what I found is that I was at Walmart. This, by the way, you can buy at Radio Shack. It's about $29. Um, this you can buy at Walmart in the checkout lane for $3.97. It's called a Jet Light. It's by Ronson. Guess what it actually is? It is a little mini butane torch. You can refill it on the back. I soldered about half of my connections with this and half of my connections with the butane torch. They both did an equally good job. The one thing I will say is that your thumb can get a little tired holding this down after a while. But uh, not too bad and cheap. And you simply buy you a can of the fuel. They make this like a, a Scripto version of this and they make a Ronson version of this. I like the Ronson a little better. I bought this can at Walgreens for around $4. Um, and I have refilled and refilled and refilled both with this and it's not even close to being empty. One of the other things I want to talk about just a little bit is solder. Um, you can buy solder very cheap at some places and it doesn't work as well as it should. Um, I found, uh, I've tried a lot of different types of solder from Philips, ECG, uh, MCM, um, and I have found that the best solder for me that seems to work the best is from Radio Shack. Um, I am a network engineer and I also do laptop repairs for a living and I use this real tiny silver bearing solder for fine connections. Uh, it's very tiny very fast. However, when soldering big wires, um, it's going to take a whole lot of this to make the connection. So I've got some of this non-silver bearing solder. This is 6040 clear flux solder. Um, the flux isn't as messy, you don't have to worry about it defluxing as much if you use a clear flux solder. But you'll see solders that say that they have a rosin core or a uh, flux core. The rosin and the flux is the stuff in the solder that helps it to stick. 
Um, however, when soldering big wires, the, what's in here probably isn't enough. Now, any silver in your solder in your 60-40 mix, this is 2% silver, really helps that connection to stick a lot better. So I usually melt just a little bit of this on the connection with the silver in it, and then finish it off with this. But the other thing you're going to need is some additional rosin soldering flux. This is also from Radio Shack. It works really well. I also have a can of liquid flux out in the garage that I use sometimes by uh, ECG, which works excellent as well. Um, but you just basically, I get a little Q-tip. I dab a nice little helping of this onto uh, the part before I solder it. Uh, but having the right solder and enough heat is going to be critical in making these connections. The next thing I want to talk about is batteries. Batteries are probably the most expensive part of any solar installation, except for maybe your solar panels, depending on how many of them you're going to need. Um, where can you find batteries that are cheap? Well, as a network engineer, I have to change out many of these for server rooms and critical PCs, and they come out of battery backup units. Um, normally, the smaller units take one or two batteries, and big units um, that run entire server rooms can hold hundreds of batteries. Uh, they come in slightly different sizes, but this is the most common one. It's a 12 volt, 7 amp hour battery. Um, if you can get these, they are great. And n many companies change these out every year or every two years, irregardless of whether they're bad or not, just because they want to make sure they have good, fresh batteries in an emergency. Um, some companies do wait until they're bad and they get a bad battery light. However, they're usually wired up in series at either 24 volts or 48 volts, and you usually only have one or two bad batteries in the pack that have dropped the voltage of the whole system. And so if you just go through and take these batteries and measure each one of them, find the ones that put out 12 volts, charge them, see if they take a charge, chances are you'll end up with a pile of good batteries that they normally have to pay to throw away. Um, and the other thing is a lot of people pay to throw these away with their trash company, but if you take the bad ones to a local metal scrapyard, uh, we have one here in my town that pays 50 cents a pound for used lead acid batteries. Um, and they actually love to get these because they have nice, heavy, thick steel, uh, lead plates in them. Um, so you can still make money just taking these batteries off of, ha off of people's hands. So get to know some IT people um, and ask them if they have any old UPS batteries. That one. Now one of the uh, next things I want to talk about that can be significant expense, a significant expense is wire. Um, you may go to a place like AutoZone or something like that to buy large gauge battery cables, uh, Harbor Freight, and you may spend 30, 40 bucks on a couple of cables. Um, and you can have a lot of money tied up in wire. Um, what I would encourage you to do is look around in your area and just Google and see if you have an electronic surplus store. I have two of them in my area. I have Mendelssohn's and Mendel Mendelssohn Industrial Electronic Surplus in Dayton, Ohio. But my favorite store, because it's much more organized and easier to find stuff, is Midwest Electronic Surplus in Fairborn, Ohio. Um, they both have uh, websites, and I'll put their websites in the notes down below. Um, what things I found there were like this. This is a uh, battery connector for these little batteries that I have. It'll fit right on that terminal, which is an F2 terminal. It comes factory crimped, so I don't have to crimp a bunch of connectors. And then I can solder the wire on on the other end. And all that looks like it might be aluminum or something. If you look closely, you probably can't see it on the camera, but it is actually a copper wire that's tinned. And pre-tinned wires are excellent for taking solder. Um, the other thing that I found um, at my electronic surplus store was this cage. It's white, it has a cloth insulator, and then there's a PVC insulator underneath. Um, six gauges, so it can handle the amperage of my system. And you can Google around and find a gauge wiring chart for how many amps you're going to draw, how big a cable you need. Uh, my system is designed to handle eight of those 12-volt UPS batteries in parallel. 
uh, which gives me a total of 56 amp hours of power. Um, and then what I did is I just trimmed the insulation off of the wire, wrapped these other wires around, I stripped about an inch off, heated it up with the torch, and soldered it. And then these will just clip onto my batteries. Um, and so all total in all of this wiring, the six gauge wire cost me nine dollars. Again, I would have got half as much wire at a place like uh, AutoZone or Harbor Freight for forty dollars or maybe thirty five dollars. Um, and then I found it's an excellent place for small screws and connectors and, and, and the big grounding lugs that I needed to go on the end of this cable were 15 cents a piece. So for all my wiring, hardware, screws, wire hold downs, lugs, I spent a total of about $19. Um, so that's a significant cost savings um, by just finding some place that deals in surplus electronics.